Good evening, colleagues and friends. On behalf of the Pedodontic Society of South Africa, I would like to welcome you to tonight's webinar, brought to you in association with SADA. Just one or two things that I'd like to get out of the way before we start is um, please do not use the raised hand function, rather type any questions that you would like answered at the end of the webinar in the Q&A box. Um, for tonight's lecture, you will receive one CEU point um, that can be downloaded. The certificate can be downloaded from the SADA website um, after tonight. And then we will be streaming this live. If any of you are any, having any difficulties with Zoom or couldn't attend tonight, this will be um, available on YouTube um, under the SADA um, YouTube channel. The PSSA, Pedodontic Society of South Africa, is a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting oral health in children. We know that treating children can be very challenging, and that is why I would like to invite you to join the PSSA and to enjoy all the benefits of a community of dentists dedicated to pediatric dentistry. Please follow the link that I'll post in the comment box later today um, to find out more about us, um, what the benefits are we have and how to join. Tonight's webinar is the first in a series of four with renowned international speakers in the celebration of oral, a World Oral Health Day. The topic for tonight's lecture is overview of the Myobrace philosophy and treatment system. And our speaker is Dr. Imad Ahangari, all the way from Australia. Dr. Ahangari qualified from Griffith University on the Gold Coast in 2014. After graduating, he started working with the Myobrace system under the supervision of Dr. John Flutter. After working in Canada for two years, he returned to Australia to work at the MRC headquarters under the direct supervision of Dr. Chris Farrell. Having worked under direct mentorship of two of the leading global authorities on myofunctional orthodontics, Dr. Ahangari is now the clinical development officer at the MRC. Dr. Ahangari excels in communication, has a passion for teaching, and looks forward to contributing his skills to revolutionizing the way professionals um, and the public view, breathing and myofunctional health issues. Thank you, Dr. Hungari. We appreciate all the way from Australia. I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Dr. Paulson. So um, first of all, I'd just like to say uh, good evening to everyone over in South Africa. And um, thank you very much for having me. It's a, it's a great honor to speak with you guys today. Um, and I'd also like to say a big thank you to SADA and PSSA uh, for hosting this event. Uh, it's wonderful uh, to be able to speak to so many professionals in South Africa. Um, and also a special thank you to um, Dr. Faisal Mansour over there for convincing me to wake up at three in the morning to deliver this lecture. Um, but um, definitely looking forward to sharing with you guys uh, some of the information um, that I have for you today. So I'm going to just share my screen now and uh, hopefully that comes up okay for everyone. Okay, fantastic. So um, I'm just going to get started on this one. I'm gonna assume everyone can see that okay. All right, awesome. So um, a very brief introduction about uh, MRC here. So we've really been involved uh, in the treatment of the various conditions listed on your screen here for over 30 years. So we, we have a particular interest um, in the airway, uh, how the patient's airway, uh, sleep disorders, snoring, tiredness, obstructive sleep apnea, 
how these factors go on to affect uh, conditions better known for dentists, such as TMJ disorders or um, deficient growth and development, which, which leads to malocclusion. Um, and as you can see down here at the bottom, we have plenty of different brands that focus on treating different sorts of problems uh, in the head and neck region. Uh, and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys uh, one of those brands, which is the MyBrace system. And we're going to be going through the philosophy and, and how we then use the MyBrace system to treat these problems. So the title of this lecture is titled The MyBrace Philosophy and Treatment System Overview. All right, so very briefly, Dr. Paulson um, graciously introduced me before. Uh, my name is Dr. Imad Hangari. I'm the Clinical Development Officer at My Functional Research, and um, I work in upper management. So I work there with Dr. Chris Farrell, and I basically oversee all the company developments from a clinical perspective, and I'm also involved in certain special projects. Um, from time to time, I am a practitioner at MRC Clinics. Uh, not as often as I'd like. We're quite busy at head office, but whenever I can, I do try and get in there and still um, see some patients, but mainly my work is uh, centered at head office at the moment, um, working on various things that, that, that involve clinical developments for the company. So what is my functional research? Who are we as a company? So I'm going to share with you here our mission statement, which pretty much sums up uh, what we do as a company. Um, and really we develop simple innovative appliance systems and education programs for health practitioners around the world to treat the breathing and myofunctional causes of malocclusion, TMJ and breathing related sleep disorders. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much what we do uh, at MRC. And you know, these are the really the main three conditions that we focus on. So we've got malocclusion, which um, everyone knows crooked teeth, uh, it's got to do with poor growth and development of the face and the inability for the teeth to fit. Um, we also focus on TMJ disorders, uh, the, the proper function of the TM joint. And also we um, focus on treating the breathing and myofunctional causes of sleep disorders. So um, dental sleep medicine is a uh, particularly new field that's emerging in dentistry. Uh, the World Dental Federation in 2018 release their own policy statement on this, which I will share with you today, um, basically urging dentists around the world to get involved in this treatment. It is our responsibility to an extent to work as part of a team and manage um, dental sleep medicine sort of problems. So we do focus on these three avenues as a company. And the most important thing is to understand that the common cause of all three of these things is breathing and myofunctional disorders. And that's going to make sense uh, throughout this presentation. So I'm just going to, um, to race through this, but these are all the various uh, things that MRC offers as a company. We do, um, we help, you know, treatment on infants. We do um, interceptive growth and development. We have myofunctional orthodontics, which is a topic of the presentation today. Um, we help braces work better. So a lot of people think that we're an alternative to, um, to orthodontics the way it's done conventionally. Um, it can be true that my brace system is an alternative method to, to approach orthodontic issues, but we've also got plenty of systems to help orthodontists and their braces work faster and more efficiently. Um, we've got solutions for orthodontists with retainers. Um, so we have retainers that work on the habits. Um, we help patients with TMJ problems after they've had Invisalign and Smiles Direct. Um, we work with uh, patients just helping them with their TMJ problems adults with their sleep disorders, pediatric uh, children with their sleep disorders. Um, and we also help uh, adults to uh, have an alternative to CPAP. So we do a lot of stuff. That's the point of this. Don't get too caught up on this slide. The point is that we do a lot of stuff. A lot of people typecast us into the early myofunctional orthodontic um, you know, bracket, but uh, we do many, many different things. And all of these things are on our website, which um, is myaresearch.com. I will share that website with you later today. So you can go on there, read about all the different things that we do. So the key points are this. Malocclusion in growing children is approaching 100%. The vast majority of our children have crooked and crowded teeth. Traditional orthodontics relapses without permanent retention. Now, orthodontics with clear aligners relapses and also can cause TMJ disorders. We've seen a lot of people come in after clear aligners with TMJ problems in our clinic. TMJ disorders affect 50% of the population or more. Most doctors do not know how to treat TMJ disorders and an estimated 1 billion adults have sleep disorders and that's out of the Lancet Journal. So what we're trying to say is we have the solutions for uh, over a billion patients. So there's so many people that are suffering from all of these problems and they come through your clinic every single day. And we equip you as the practitioner with the tools, the education, the approaches to be able to treat all of these patients. 
So in summary, there's really two things that we do. If you group all those things together, we have myofunctional orthodontics and we have TMJ breathing and disordered sleep. But the topic of today's presentation is the myobrace system, which falls under the myofunctional orthodontic appliance range. So before we get into the presentation, let's start with a bit of history. So many of you would know this gentleman here, his name is Edward Engel. Um, Dr. Edward Engel was the father of orthodontics. He was the one who founded the first school um, of orthodontics and the Engel's classification of class one, class two, and class three malocclusion. And in 1907, he published this textbook that you can see in front of you. And uh, he said on a page coming up here on page 111, we'll be zooming in on that image in just a second here, right down the bottom there. Of all the various causes of malocclusion, mouth breathing is the most potent, constant, and varied in its results. So Angle recognized mouth breathing and the subsequent problems that mouth breathing caused on the muscles of the mouth as a major cause of malocclusion. Now, a lot of um, modern orthodontists would say that, okay, Angle, you know, his, he, was a, he was an idealist and his theories are sort of in the past. Um, however, this gentleman here, Bill Prophet or William Prophet, um, is a highly respected, uh, relatively modern orthodontist. He unfortunately passed away three years ago. Um, he's the chief author of uh, the textbook Contemporary Orthodontics, which is a textbook that is taught, um, you know, it's the major orthodontic textbook around the world. And he published a paper uh, in 1978 in the Angle Orthodontist titled Equilibrium Theory Revisited, the factors that influence the position of the teeth. So he looked at what influenced where the teeth are positioned uh, in the mouth, what causes the malocclusion. And the conclusion of this paper was the major primary factors in the dental equilibrium appear to be the resting pressures of the tongue and lips and forces created within the periodontal membrane. And then he goes down at the bottom to say respiratory needs influence head, jaw and tongue posture and thereby alter the equilibrium. So what he means by that is that the needs for breathing, respiratory needs, influence the head, jaw, and tongue posture. So in order to breathe through the mouth, the head, jaw, and tongue posture have to change. That alters the way the muscles act on the teeth, and that then causes crooked teeth. Now we fast forward all the way to um, the AJODO, which is the American Journal of Orthodontics, um, probably the, the most famous or most impactful orthodontic journal in the world. Um, and in 2018, we're seeing papers like this pop up in almost every edition evaluation of pharyngeal space, so the space of the upper airway, and its correlation with the mandible and hyoid bone in patients with different skeletal classes and facial types. The significance of this paper is that we're now seeing orthodontic journals looking at problems to do with the airway and crooked teeth in almost every edition. And let's look at the first, first paragraph of the introduction. Craniofacial growth and occlusion are influenced, amongst other things, by the respiratory function, by the way a patient breathes. An impaired respiratory function, so an inability to breathe through the nose, is associated with airway inadequacy that can result in the habit of mouth breathing. So if you can't breathe through your nose, you're gonna drop your mouth open and breathe through your mouth. This change in breathing pattern leads to lowering of the mandible and the tongue and an extended head posture. So if you're gonna breathe through your mouth, you're gonna open your mouth, huh? your tongue's gonna to drop from the roof of your mouth and you're gonna tip your head forward. Changes in normal airway function during the active facial growth period can have a profound influence on facial development by the time a patient comes for orthodontic treatment. So the number one orthodontic journal sees the need to evaluate beyond the teeth, can't just be looking at the teeth. And that is in essence, myofunctional orthodontics, the topic of today's discussion. So I briefly alluded to this particular policy statement. So in 2018, the World Dental Federation released this particular policy statement titled Dentistry and Sleep-Related Breathing Disorders. And they basically said that this, this paper was about the important role of dentists in prevention, early screening, and treatment of young patients with sleep-related breathing disorders. So sleep-related breathing disorders are um, a range of breathing disorders that affect people during sleep. And basically, they range from mouth breathing to intermittent snoring, so snoring more than three nights a week, and upper airway resistance, which is like a resistance to air as you breathe in at nighttime, and then obstructive sleep apnea, which is the problem that everyone knows. That's when you stop breathing at nighttime. So it's a spectrum of problems. It's a range of problems, starting from mouth breathing, finishing at obstructive sleep apnea. 
So what did the FDI say? The FDI recommended that universities and national dental associations provide dentists and students with basic knowledge regarding the important role of dentistry in preventing and treating SRBD, in particular, early detection in children and prevention of late onset forms. So I'd like to applaud SADA and PSSA for holding this particular presentation because that's in line with what the FDI has recommended. All dental and medical health forms to include questions about the patient's sleep quality and related data to do the screening of sleep related breathing disorders and dentists to provide proper information to patients to understand the process of screening, treatment options and the role that dental care providers are involved. So we've talked about the what, let's talk about the how. So before we do that, we have to talk a little bit about growth and development. So this book here that you see on the left is called The Handbook of Facial Growth, and it was written by Donald Enloe. It was um, probably, I don't know if it still is, but it probably is still one of the major um, craniofacial growth textbooks that are taught in orthodontic schools. It's certainly at the start of contemporary orthodontics by Bill Prophet. Um, and I would still say, it, it, you know, Dr. Enloe was, or Professor Enloe, I should say, was um, very highly regarded and is, still is highly regarded in the field of craniofacial growth. Um, and in the book, he says, growth is not programmed within the bone itself or its enclosing membranes. The blueprint for the design, construction and growth of a bone thus lies in the muscles, tongue, lips, cheeks, integument, mucosa, connective tissues, nerves, blood vessels, airway and pharynx, and the brain as an organ mass, the tonsils, adenoids, and so forth, all of which provide information signals that pace the histogenic tissues, producing a bone's development. So what he in, in essence says is that within the bone itself, there isn't a blueprint or a genetic blueprint where the bone can say, oh, okay, I have to grow to this, this dimension. The bone receives signals from the soft tissues that are surrounding it, and that then paces a bone's development. So although there are genes that do sort of control the, the bone growth, there is a feedback system that's happening with the soft tissue all the time, um, which is why we do see a lot of growth disorders when people have soft tissue disorders. So the key word here is that the blueprint for the design, construction, and growth of a bone thus lies in the muscles, tongue, lips, and cheeks. And you only need to look um, at the local pediatric ward where children have um, things like muscular atrophy, et cetera, and see the difference in their bone growth to know um, that that's true. So I'm gonna play for you a video now that actually explains how that mechanically then leads to um, crowding of the teeth. So it's gonna be a bit of audio that's coming up soon. So here's, a, here's someone who's mouth breathing. Oh, sorry, I forgot to turn the volume up. The mouth breather typically has the lips open most of the time. This makes the facial development narrow and long. The tongue tip pushes forward generally between the teeth, which do not contact during swallowing. There are many variations of this, but the elements are the same. The mandible moves back. The tongue action prevents correct arch development. A narrow V-shaped upper arch with crowding is the result. The backward movement of the mandible in swallowing compresses the TM joint causing TMJ problems. So as you can see from that, um, that uh, video there that we showed before, when you breathe through the mouth, the tongue drops um, from the roof of the mouth, and that then causes all these muscles to push on the teeth and crowd the upper jaw, which causes malocclusion. Okay, so that's, that's the mechanics of how it works. Now, when this is happening during the growth period of a child, so when they're growing rapidly and their face is growing, if the muscles aren't doing the right thing, then you can understand what could then go wrong. So here's a slide to demonstrate that. So on the left here, we see normal growth, which is downward and forward. And as we grow forward, we get more space for the teeth and the airway, et cetera. Mouth breathers grow this way, they grow downward and backward, and reverse swallowers, they grow this way as well. So um, as you're going downward and backward, you're creating less space for the teeth and the tongue is then falling into the um, oral airway as well. So like I mentioned, the lack of forward growth leaves less space for the teeth and the airway. 
And you can see this child here, who's obviously grown incorrectly. Um, you can see how much of the face is missing in this particular child and the tongue, the jaw and everything has fallen back into the airway. So how much of the face is missing? There's the teeth and there's the airway and the child has to maintain an airway and an occlusion to survive. Those are the two most important things it has to do. So malocclusion is thus the compensation for this poor growth. So don't take it from me. Let's hear it from an orthodontist, Dr. Barry Raphael from, uh, from the US. Kids are walking around with their mouths open, their tongue hanging down away from the roof of the mouth, and this alters the way the jaws grow. So our faces are changing. They're changing in their size and shape, and teeth try to come in and fit into jaws that are undersized and just don't have a chance. Uh, orthodontics pretty much overlooks that phenomenon and just looks at straightening the teeth. But one of the side effects of that kind of thinking is that we, when you don't have enough room for the teeth, often you wind up taking some of them out as part of the solution. Okay, so you can see Dr. Dr. Barry there reiterating um, what we're saying. So how common is malocclusion? So do you need to care about this? Um, there's multiple studies now that are showing, um, you know, upwards of 93% of children suffering from some form of malocclusion. Now, that doesn't mean that every single one of those kids needs treatment. Maybe the majority of them do. Um, but the fact of the matter is that that could be an indication for you um, to detect these breathing and myofunctional problems. And you can have a chance of improving this child's growth, um, improving their health and development. And also, by the way, as a consequence, helping them develop with straight teeth. So almost every child in your clinic has a malocclusion. So a lot, of, a lot of people will be sitting there asking, well, why not just wait and use braces? What's wrong with braces? Well, um, we have nothing against braces as they're an absolute fantastic way to straighten the teeth. Um, you know, it's, it's not easy to do braces. Orthodontists are highly skilled, um, but there are some issues that we do need to talk about. So um, obviously if, if a child doesn't keep their teeth clean, we do see a bit of enamel damage with um, when the brackets are taken off. Uh, we know that 100% of teeth that are moved with braces uh, suffer from root resorption. There's no exception to that. Every single one suffers from some level of root resorption. Um, and that was uh, that particular study that looked at that only looked at the teeth moving over four weeks. So you imagine if you're moving the teeth for 24 months, um, you know, what are the sort of effects on the roots of the teeth? Um, now, the main problem here, though, is permanent retention. So Permanent retention has become the norm in orthodontic treatment for braces and Invisalign or clear aligners. Otherwise, relapse will occur as the myofunctional causes have not been treated. Research shows that despite long-term retainers, many still relapse. And this is an American Journal of Orthodontics study down here, um, a, a section taken from that study. Um, the conclusion here is our results suggest that occlusal relapse can be expected after active orthodontic treatment, irrespective of long-term use of fixed retainers. So... Basically what they're saying is whether or not you use retainers, you can expect some sort of occlusal relapse. Um, so that's why we've, we've started to create a few um, different products for orthodontists to retain their um, orthodontic cases using uh, myofunctional retainers. It's not perfect. It's better to just treat the patient properly to begin with, um, but at least it will help, uh, I guess, stabilize the case a little bit more by stopping those muscles from pushing the teeth uh, incorrectly. So it can be argued that traditional orthodontic treatment has little long-term benefit, um, but really the problem that I care about the most is that the breathing and myofunctional disorders are not treated. You're just focusing on the teeth and you've missed your opportunity to help the patient improve their growth and development and their health. So really this presentation is about taking you out of the sort of straight teeth aesthetic focus way of thinking into myofunctional orthodontics, which is about treating the causes, having better airway function, more stability, better growth, better function, and straight teeth. We don't ignore straight teeth. We still want straight teeth, but we also think that you need to treat the underlying factors as well. So let's define myofunctional orthodontics. Myofunctional orthodontics recognizes the causes of malocclusion as mouth breathing and myofunctional dysfunction. Myofunctional orthodontics acknowledges the limitations of all current orthodontic techniques, enamel damage, root resorption, permanent retention, and relapse. The Myobrace system was developed to treat the causes of malocclusion and incorrect jaw growth, as well as align the teeth into a stable position while avoiding damage to the teeth. The primary goal of myofunctional orthodontics with the Myobrace system is to establish a better airway and nasal breathing, which gives added health benefits. 
Now, in order to do this, this requires a new approach to patient management with education and habit correction performing away from the conventional dental office setting. So if we want to do this kind of treatment, we have to think differently about the way we do treatment. And the dental and health consequences of ignoring the causes sets the patient up for a lifetime of maladies and can be potentially life shortening. So let's demonstrate that with these two cases here. So um, the girl here on the left and the right, um, they came in to see our clinics in the year 2000. Um, they both had the same malocclusion and the same causes. You can see they're both swallowing with their lips incorrectly. And when you have a look at their teeth, you see that they're both thrusting their tongue forward when they swallow. So both have a malocclusion with an open bite caused by mouth breathing and myofunctional disorders. So this patient here on the right, um, she went into her dentist and they said, oh, it's too early to treat. Just wait till she's older and we can do braces. But the girl on the left was treated with one of our earlier systems called the Trainer for Kids, um, which has since been superseded by the um, MyBrace for Kids. Uh, and we can now see what the costs are of ignoring the breathing and myofunctional causes of malocclusion for the girl on the right. So she returns 12 years later for braces, and this is what we find. Mouth breathing, myofunctional problems, malocclusion. She has a poor posture. She's got TMJ problems, she grinds her teeth, she's got head, neck and back pain. She's got a deficient upper jaw, she's got a deficient lower jaw. She got sleep disorders as well. Now the question is, if this patient had orthodontics with just braces, would she be any better? Okay. Yeah, she would probably have straight teeth, um, but would she be any better overall? So let's have a look at the, the difference. So you can see that the girl here that was treated with myofunctional orthodontics on the left, you can see her better facial development and the way that the face has grown more healthily. Um, and you can also see here from the side. So if the profile has improved, the question is um, who has the better airway? So why would we do myofunctional orthodontics? Well, these are all the things that we can develop or get with doing myofunctional orthodontics with the MyBrace system. So we get improved development of the face. We get improved upper arch form without extractions. We uncrowd lower anteriors with minimal forces. We have class two and class three correction. We, have, we open deep bites and close open bites. We're stable without fixed retainers and we achieve health benefits through better breathing and better airway. Now, many of you would be asking, how is it possible that one treatment approach can treat all these different types of um, malocclusions? The fact of the matter is that it's the same as if you go to um, a general physician and if you're overweight and you've got all these health problems as a result of being overweight, like say so you've got cholesterol problems, you've got heart problems, you've got knee problems, joint problems, by losing weight and fixing the cause of your problem, you see all the symptoms improve. You don't necessarily correct them all 100%, but you do see them all improve. And that's the philosophy that we, we operate under. So by treating the causative breathing and myofunctional disorders, we see an improvement in all the different forms of malocclusion that I've, I'm displaying in front of you today. Um, so it's all about treating the causes and that's how we can achieve all these different things. Now, obviously there's logistical um, advantages to it as well. You, we get comprehensive myofunctional training um, by using the MyBrace activities. 80% of the treatment is delegated to trained auxiliaries. So it's minimal time for the dentist. Um, they can focus on other things. Uh, it's, the appliance is used for one hour a day plus overnight and also used with traditional braces and aligners if needed. So very adaptive system and very easy to implement into the um, modern clinic. So let's take a look at all these things in turn. So here's, um, an example of an improved development of the face. Here's also an example of an improvement in the profile. And we can see here uh, improved upper arch form with no extractions. That's obviously a result of getting the tongue up into the roof of the mouth. Um, once the tongue rests up in the roof of the mouth, we can see a nice development of the upper jaw and good stability. And you can see the lower teeth as well. They uncrowd by themselves. That's with, with just using the Maya brace, just by correcting the poor swallow and getting the tongue up into the roof of the mouth no fixed retainers. Okay, class two correction um, happens quite regularly, uh, again, from treating the causes, that's from treating the uh, tongue position, the breathing, etc. cetera. Um, and we see class two correction happen regularly. We also see class three correction happen uh, in this particular case. You can see this child um, in two years, the class, class three malocclusion was corrected. And um, what's that, five years on, four and a half years on, the teeth are still stable because the habits have been corrected. So again, uh, no fixed retainers. Okay, we, we can also open deep bites. So deep bites is often a result of the tongue sitting between um, the back teeth. 
So we, we open the bite, we correct the tongue posture, um, and you can see the open, uh, deep bites open um, quite predictably. You can also see an improvement in the lower arch form. Um, that's also from removing the uh, muscular forces that are pushing in on the back teeth. And you can see how the lower arch is rounded out quite nicely. Again, no fixed retainers. Open bites. Um, this open bite was caused by the tongue pushing out through the teeth. When we get the tongue to position up in the roof of the mouth, um, you see the open bites close and they generally remain stable. I know that it's quite difficult to correct open bites in orthodontics and keep them stable, but we generally don't have a problem. Now, this particular paper, um, or this sorry, case I should say, uh, was displayed in a paper published in the American Journal of Orthodontics. Um, this is to demonstrate that you can combine our appliances with um, braces and achieve some wonderful results as you can see here. So the conclusions were, a 10-year-old girl with class 2 division 1 characterized by severe maxillary incisor protrusion and an underdeveloped mandible was successfully treated with a trainer for braces and fixed appliances. My functional training contributed to correcting oral habits and establishing muscular balance. The occlusion and facial profile were effectively improved with good post-treatment stability. Okay, and you can see that on the left and then right is four years after treatment. Okay, and it's uh, all those things that I just mentioned, they're all just reiterated by the AJODO. Okay, and then this particular study was published by Professor Luca Lavrini uh, in the Journal of Clinical Pediatric Dentistry in March, 2018, um, looking at the myobrace appliances and myosur appliances on sleep disorders in children. And the conclusions down the bottom say, a, the present results suggest that myobrace myosur can be an alternative to treat mild to moderate obstructive sleep apnea in children. So you got to remember obstructive sleep apnea is a severe form. Um, so if it can help children with severe um, sleep disorders, uh, we're helping children with mouth breathing on the regular. Okay. So here are some common symptoms to detect in your children. Uh, if you guys like, after this slide is finished, you can um, take a photo of it. But you know, these are things that you would see day to day. Uh, I decided to put in some young patients here because um, that's the best time to detect these problems. So you can see things like an underbite, uh, insufficient spacing between the teeth. The teeth should have two to three millimeters spacing all across them. Um, you can see open bites like that one, a narrow arch form. So if it's not a nice big broad U shape, that's a problem. Um, an overjet of over one millimeter. So a horizontal discrepancy there of over one millimeter, a deep bite of over one millimeter, a crowding of the, the lower teeth, crowding of the upper teeth, uh, grinding of the teeth, enlarged tonsils. So make sure you look in the back of the mouth. That's a problem with the airway. Obviously it needs, needs attention. Um, cross bites, so the upper jaw biting inside the lower jaw and obviously gingivitis at the front. That's a common symptom of mouth breathing. So if you wanted to take a photo of um, this particular slide, you're more than welcome to, just so you know what to look for uh, in your patients. And here are some of the extra oral um, things to look for, you know, things like an open mouth, uh, deficient lower and uh, upper face, uh, things like a tongue tie. If the tongue's stuck to the bottom of the mouth, it can't get up into the roof of the mouth to develop the upper jaw. Um, we also see venous pulling, these bags under the eyes. That's a symptom of um, breathing problems, allergies, et cetera. Um, a reverse swallow. You can see the lower lip pushing against the teeth here. That's a problem when the kid swallows. Uh, and also pushing the tongue forward like a tongue thrust, that's also another problem. Okay, and obviously poor posture as well. There's plenty of studies now that show mouth breathing causes you to tip your head forward and that imbalances your spine and can cause um, poor posture. Obviously not all bad postures are related to mouth breathing, but it's a sign. Okay, so the myofunctional orthodontic evaluation. Um, so we use the myofunctional orthodontic evaluation to uh, have a look at these children. These are the key indicators that we have to look for, um, arch form, facial development, mouth open posture, incompetent lips and snoring. These are the common key points that we use for um, my functional orthodontic diagnosis. There's three sections to the MOE. There's the dental section, the function section, and also the breathing section. Um, the dental section, uh, it looks at dental alignment, crowding, spacing, um, proclining of the teeth, retroclining. Uh, the arch form looks at uh, with the shape of the arch form, whether it's flattened, narrow, et cetera. Uh, the occlusion looks at whether there's a deep bite, an overjet, et cetera. So there's all these things that we, we assess in our myofunctional orthodontic evaluation. 
Um, we also look at whether there's deficiencies in the mid and lower face and whether, how the face has grown. Now dentists are actually quite good at seeing all these things. Um, we can see some examples here. This girl has uh, crowding of her lower teeth there on the left and upper teeth. She has a deep bite occlusion and you can see her um, facial growth is uh, deficient, the lower and upper face. So those are things that we, we tend to look for. You see here, she's got a deep bite. Now things that dentists need to look for a bit better uh, are breathing, tongue, swallowing and lips and cheeks. So these are some of the symptoms that we look for. So mouth breathing while awake, um, poor posture, et cetera, uh, poor tongue posture, lingual frenum attachment, things like this. So uh, if the tongue cannot operate properly, it cannot rest in the roof of the mouth. Um, that's what we want to know because that's what we want to correct. Um, obviously the swallow pattern, we want to know how the child is swallowing. And we also want to know how they're behaving with their uh, lips and cheeks as well at rest. So because dentists aren't that trained at looking at function, you can relate the function to the um, dental situation. So if a child is not breathing correctly, the tongue drops from the roof of the mouth. So the orthodontic result is that the arch form is narrow. Okay, and that ties into um, the arch form here for the tongue as well. So if the, if the arch form is narrow, you know that the tongue is not sitting up there. So the tongue just can't fit up there. Okay, if the, child, if the patient has an occlusion that's sort of an overjet or um, let's say tip back teeth, you know that the swallow is incorrect because the swallow is pushing back on those teeth. And again, uh, if the lips and cheeks are tight, uh, you know that the, the teeth are going to be crowded, the lower teeth are going to be crowded, um, like so. So the point of this slide is to say, don't worry with a bit of training, you will understand the patient's function. But in the meantime, you can relate the function to the way that the patient's teeth are. Okay, so the dental alignment and arch form directly relate to function. So very briefly, let's discuss the myobrace appliances. So you've, dis you've evaluated the patient, they got a problem. Well, how does the myobrace help? So let's hear it from Dr. Barry again. Well, what myobrace does is look at those underlying causes and tries to deal with them. We teach kids to breathe through their nose, keep their lips together, keep their tongue resting on the roof of the mouth so the jaws can grow in their uh, proper and full size. Then there's plenty of room for the teeth and often the teeth will come in straight even before you get to the brace. So again, by putting the my brace appliances in, um, sorry, let's just go back here. Well, what myobrace does is look- By putting the my brace appliances in like this and getting the child to close their mouth, the my brace appliances have features that push the tongue up into the roof of the mouth like you see here and also, while the child is um, wearing the my brace, they have to breathe in through their nose. So it retrains the patient to adopt the correct habits. So it's a training appliance. It's not a, an orthodontic appliance, it's a training appliance. It trains the muscles to do the right thing. And as a result, like Barry said, um, the teeth come through straight as the child is growing, generally before you get to the braces. So let's look at some of the key features of my brace appliances. So we have the tongue tag, which encourages the child to put the tip of the tongue uh, onto the roof of the mouth. Um, and that, gu that guides their tongue into the correct position. We have the tongue elevators, which lift the body of the tongue into the roof of the mouth uh, and encourage the tongue to rest correctly. We have the dynamical. This isn't in all the appliances, but it's in the second stage appliances. And it gives a bit more rigidity to the um, appliance, which helps to develop the upper jaw. Uh, and then that's obviously backed up by the muscles, which um, hold the, uh, the expansion. And then you have the lip bumpers here down the bottom, which discourage the lower lip from pressing against them when they swallow. And obviously the breathing holes. So because they're so small, they promote nasal breathing and discourage mouth breathing. Okay, and obviously the high sides, they hold the cheeks and um, lips away from the teeth and that develops the upper jaw. It allows the, the, the jaws to develop. They're all used for one hour a day and overnight and all my brace appliances assist in correcting breathing and my functional habits. So Dr. Paulson would be interested in this. This is a little um, interesting case that I threw in for you guys here. Just this is the first time anyone's actually seeing this. So you guys have um, a first sneak peek at this case. So a lot of people out there will be saying, well, what about for severe cases? Is my brace only for mild cases? Now, this is 100% disclaimer, this is not for beginners. So you don't want to start on this case. Um, you want to refer this out, this one out until you're comfortable with doing these cases. But is it only for mild cases? This case is one of the most severe malocclusions that we've had come to our clinic. 
Uh, if you don't believe me, here's a chat from uh, one of my orthodontist friends who I said on a scale of one to 10, how severe is this? And he said a 9.5. So what we did for this patient is that we fitted what we call an upper BWS. This is the way that we expand the upper jaw um, and we combine that with our Maya brace. So just BWS and just Maya brace. And obviously our whole Maya brace protocol. Um, you can already see the lower incisors are improving uh, in their alignment. And two months ago, this is the most recent update of um, this particular patient. So that's how we got that patient with that severe crowding to this. So if anyone says myobrace is just for mild patients, it's obviously not. Um, there is a, a bit of a rotated tooth here down in the bottom, but that's very easily fixed with a very short case of, um, uh, of, of fixed orthodontics. And again, take it from my um, orthodontist friend, uh, how severe is this malocclusion one to 10? And he says 1.5. So that's very easily fixed now with uh, fixed appliances. But it's the benefits that go beyond the straight teeth that I really care about. So this is a sleep questionnaire form that we give the children. You can see everything is ticked yes here on the left, or a lot of things there are ticked yes. Um, the child had a lot of sleep disorders, a lot of breathing disorders, and not even, I think it was 12 months into treatment, so halfway, most of those things are now no. Um, and that's really what I care about because anyone can just straighten the teeth, but it's all the other things that we achieve with the MyRace system um, that is really of interest to me. And what a great thing that we can do by improving a child's dental alignment, but also improving the way they function and they grow and, and breathe. And also, I want you to hear this testimonial from the parent um, because it's the best system for patients, parents, and practitioners. So just have a listen to what the mum has to say here. So first of all, her snoring. Yeah. She doesn't snore anymore. At all. At all. That's great. Um, there might be a slight uh, yeah. sound, but it's mm -hmm. not as I wish I could actually demonstrate how <laughs> yeah. loud she was, um, but not at all anymore. Mm -hmm. um, she is confident. So we're about a year and a half into it and yeah. she's got her confidence back. That's um, so good. So quality of life, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's about it. Her teeth, her, her teeth are amazing. Yeah. Um, complete turnaround. Um, she had a very, very narrow top and bottom and now it's quite oval shaped. So yeah. they're probably the biggest things. The thing yeah. I love about that interview uh, is the fact that the mum said all those things. And then right at the end, she said, oh, geez, the teeth. I forgot about the teeth. Uh, because at the end of the day, parents care about growing up children healthy and um, you know, functioning correctly. And the teeth are a nice little side effect on the side. So that's a really lovely interview. And I'd, I'd like to share that with you guys today. So don't worry about this too much, guys. I've, I've, I've said a lot today and we've learned a lot today. But I just wanted to mention that um, as you go through these, these processes and learn more about my functional orthodontics, the next step for you is to move to bigger ideas such as the pediatric health, sleep disorders, TMJ and chronic pain. And MRC does have um, solutions for that. You can treat the cause of breathing and TMJ disorders without performing orthodontic techniques. Um, so we have systems that are non-orthodontic and these are some of our Myosa appliances and Myotalia appliances. Don't worry about that too much. It's on our website. Just go read about it a bit later. Um, but I don't want to confuse you with too much information. Just know that they're there and it's all on our website. Okay, well, here's the website. So step one of um, fast tracking your learning and getting started is every single person that's listening to this today, if this topic interests you or if you want more information, you can do this right now. Go on your phone, go to myoresearch.com, www.myoresearch.com, um, register your account, click that online courses tab at the top, um, and uh, complete our free courses. That explains everything about uh, what I described to you today. Also, you can read through our appliances as well. So please, please, please get online, create a free account, do the free courses, um, get yourself educated on the topic. Step two is to sign up with the PSSA and you get immediate access to the free three-part introductory MyBrace webinar series. Um, so a lot of the things that I covered today uh, are covered in more detail in the free three-part introductory series. Uh, and then subsequently, there's a whole bunch of other webinars, uh, which comes into step three. And that's to contact um, dental care uh, with at these contact information that's listed in front of you here. And they will give you the remainder of the webinars and also um, this book, Guiding Craniofacial Growth and Development with the Myobrace System. So that comes together as a package. 
Okay, guys, and uh, that is my presentation. I decided to keep it a, a bit shorter because I wanted to um, just not inundate you with information. The key is to go on myresearch.com. Uh, it's all there. You can learn in your own time. Um, there's uh, learning objectives and multiple choice questionnaires on there. So um, it's a much more effective tool for you to learn. This this uh, webinar is really a, um, I guess, a taster just to just to share with you guys the, the foundations of the philosophy and the rest of the education is covered with um, the three-step procedure that uh, I shared with you there. So um, I'm ready for any questions. Dr. Angari, thank you so much for taking the time for such an insightful lecture. We realize that it is 4 a.m. in Australia time and he got up very early to share this with us, so it's much appreciated. I have, a few, I have a few questions from some of the attendees. Um, the first question is, can a myobrace appliance also be used to enhance horizontal growth for aesthetic reasons, i.e. to create more appear a more attractive appearance in a patient? Um, it, it, it can. It depends on how early, right? So um, it's different from things that orthodontists use like a face mask. Uh, it doesn't pull the face forward. What it does is it corrects the habit, and then during the growth period, it encourages correct growth. So the earlier you treat the problem, the better the growth is going to be. But when you say horizontal growth, uh, it, it really just, it, it depends because that horizontal growth is healthy and that is what we want. Um, the earlier you treat the problem, yes, you do see some horizontal growth, but it's very hard to say that if you use the MyoBase, your face will grow forward by X amount of millimeters. Um, that's all dependent on the patient's uh, expression, the way that they express their own um, genetic potential. So all you're doing is that you're establishing the correct foundations for them to then grow um, into uh how, how basically biology wanted them to, or nature wanted them to grow. So it's don't treat it as like a, you know, 12 year old comes in and your face will grow forward, you know, five millimeters if you wear the Maya brace. Um, the earlier you treat it, the more growth happens in a favorable manner, um, but you do see positive effects on horizontal growth, yes. Thank you. Then relating to that is I've had a few questions on what age can you start? What's the earliest that, can, that you can start? And one of our attendees actually said that he's noticing mouth breathing in a two-year-old. Um, what would you do? So those two related to each other. Um, so that's a good question. The youngest patients that we've treated are three. We have a Myobrace for Juniors um, series, which is uh, designed for three to six-year-olds, three to five-year-olds, I should say. And um, you can treat children young. The, the trouble becomes compliance. So... Um, you know, that's, that's basically on the systems that the clinic can implement. So if the, this, the clinic can implement, um, you know, good practices and encourage the child and motivate them, um, the earlier you start, the better. Now for a two-year-old, so under three, um, it's very hard just because of the size of the myobraces. Uh, it, it's very hard to fit one in the mouth because um, their mouths are so small. We have another product called the Myo Chew product, which is designed for, um, you know, allowing these kids to exercise their chewing muscles and push their tongue up on the roof of the mouth. Um, that just corrects the habits. So they don't wear that at nighttime. It's just an exercising appliance during the day. Um, and that's a pretty good preventative appliance. So if you wanted to do something for a two-year-old, you'd use a MyoChew, which is on our, um, our website. So go onto our website, go to appliances, go to Myotalia. That's the name of the brand. So appliances, Myotalia, and then you'll see the MyoChew appliance there. Um, and just click that, read about it. Um, that's a that's a good solution for you. But uh, the Maya Brace system, the youngest we've treated is three, but the best age to treat from uh, our clinical experience is at the age of six to seven, because a child is old enough um, to understand what to do, but young enough to still be growing rapidly. Thank you very much. Then um, does the wear of face masks with the COVID pandemic that we're suffering now, could the wearing of face mask encourage mouth breathing? Uh, could face face masks encourage mouth breathing? Yes, that is a question. Um, yes, I, I, I'm not sure, actually. I don't think so. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I don't think so, no. Uh, you just... I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure. It, does a, the question have a, a mechanism that they think could cause it with? Did they elaborate on that question at all? Not at all, not at all. I think it's just related right. to the COVID pandemic. I think everybody's asking questions, so... I had to post uh, that time that we're in right now. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to think about uh, how it could, but I, d I don't think it could, no, because you, you, you pinch the, the, um, the face mask on your nasal bridge anyway, um, so it's on the bone. And um, 
yeah, unless you are breathe, unless you need to breathe through your mouth to get more air in, maybe. But I, I don't think so. No, you don't wear it for long enough. Thank you. Then, do you think that a carbohydrate-rich diet influences sleep-related breathing disorders? Um, um, that's a good. And is that a, a disease of the twentieth, nineteenth, and twentieth century? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, for anyone interested in, in the topic, I recommend a book by a guy called Weston Price, W-E-S-T-O-N um, Price, and it's called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. Um, it, it actually, it looks through that, that topic. So once people adopted the Western diet, um, that's when you see all these problems popping up. Um, it's not my uh, area of expertise, but I do know a little bit about it, but there is a theory out there that um, the carbohydrate rich diet does cause inflammation in the body. Um, and that inflammation then can lead to, um, you know, various breathing dysfunctions, adenoids and tonsil swelling, et cetera. But I encourage you to read that book and do some of your own research on the effect of diet on breathing disorders. Um, and uh, it's, it's very fascinating field. So as part of my functional orthodontics, we do recommend a good um, whole diet for that reason. Then if I incorrectly mis misdiagnosed a patient as a mouth breather, and start treatment with myobrace. Could that be harmful? If I could, could myobrace treatment in a case where a child was not a mouth breather, that it was treated, could that be harmful to the development of the child? Uh, no, it, it can't, because it's the same as saying um, uh, if a patient is already skinny, would a healthy diet be harmful for them? You see what I mean? So establishing correct habits is never unhealthy. And if the child has a malocclusion, um, well, you're already improving the malocclusion. So I, uh, it's not unhealthy, no. Thank you very much. Then I just wanted to note that a few uh, attendees are asking to repost some of the slides that they wanted to take pictures of. It is being streamed live on YouTube and you will be able to access it from there um, should you want to um, take any photos of the slides afterwards. Um, so I would just want to make a note of that. And there is a lot of questions regarding the costs and do medical aids cover, which from a Australian point of view, I do think that um, you probably would not be able to answer. So I will ask Myobrace South Africa to, to um, send us a, a note regarding a medical aids and costs, et cetera, et cetera, for those that are interested. Definitely, um, yeah. Um, to, Dr. Faisal can definitely help with that. Yes, thank you. So I will ask Dr. Faisal Mansour to, to aid us in that. They do, how do adenoids affect breathing and jaw development? Is it something that be, can be corrected through a MyBrace system of treatment or would that be a, a multidisciplinary approach? Um, adenoids are situated behind the nose. Um, so if they swell, there's only one adenoid actually. It's a, it's a bit of a tonsil tissue, but we call them adenoids. Um, if they swell, they block the, the flow of air through the nose. So you're forced to breathe through your mouth. Um, as a result of being forced to breathe through your mouth, uh, that then um, obviously leads to, to mouth breathing and incorrect growth. Um, it's, the adenoids themselves can't be managed with the myobrace. The mouth breathing can, but the adenoids themselves uh, should be managed by an ear, nose and throat doctor. Um, now that's, once you go through the learning program uh, on the website, we do teach people how to read um, radiographs, how to work with ear, nose and throat doctors to determine which patients need a referral and which don't. Basically, it depends on the severity. So the more severe it is, the more likely they are to need an ear, nose and throat doctor to, um, to remove those adenoids and tonsils surgically or pharm pharmacologically, they can use nasal sprays. And then another question is regarding the use of myobrace. Um, a lot of patients, a lot of attendees are asking, do we need a special qualification? Um, as you have mentioned, there is courses that can be done. There is also a special that if you are a member of the PSSA that you can do that. But just give me a, a, a quick idea, myobrace and orthodontics. From the lecture that I watched um, that you, from the 16 um, webinar lecture series that you had, you have an appliance that actually works together with orthodontic treatment that the dentist can um, use with, in, together, you know, in, in accordance with orthodontic treatment. Just give us a little bit about that, if you don't mind. So that, um, that appliance uh, is the B series. Um, again, if everyone goes on myresearch.com, go to appliances, um, then myobrace, then the myobrace for braces. Um, the B series is basically exactly the same as a myobrace. It corrects the habits in exactly the same way, um, but it has little channels that are cut out inside the myobrace that allow for room for the brackets and arch wire. 
Um, and a lot of my orthodontic uh, friends who have started using the MyBrace for braces now use it in every case. Um, so it, it helps them to correct the muscle problems that are causing orthodontic problems while straightening the teeth. And that, I mean, any orthodontist knows how difficult it is to move the teeth against dysfunctional muscles. So using those two things together really helps a lot. Uh, in response to your um, question about uh, the special qualifications, you do need to be a dental practitioner uh, in Australia, at least at the minimum, you need to be a general dentist. Um, in some countries around the world, they allow oral hygienists to perform this, this kind of treatment, but um, you we recommend that it's done under a, um, a dental practitioner. Uh, but it all the rules vary in different countries. Um, and obviously we do recommend that you make sure you get trained properly. Uh, if you go through our website training process, there's a, um, you know, there's an actual flow of courses that you have to do and things, there's exams that you have to pass. Um, and then uh, we then will support depart the support department or Dr. Faisal's department will um, help you go through the treatment and implement that um, the treatment correctly. So please, please make sure you're trained, never do something without um, adequate training. There are MyBrace appliances like the B series, like the MyBrace for braces that you could use um, without any training, you can just buy that appliance and fit it over the top of your braces. But um, for the rest of it, I do recommend you get training, but it's all on the website. It'll tell you what products need training and what don't. Dr. Angari, I thank you for your time. We're not going to keep you any longer. Um, I suppose okay. we can get ready for, for a full day of work ahead of you. Um, yeah. there on the <laughs> so thank you very, very much for your time. We truly appreciate it. Um, and I hope you have a good evening and we would love to... Um, learn a bit more about MyBrace and attend the website and attend some of your courses. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for hosting me, Dr. Paulson. Thanks to everyone in South Africa for staying up and listening to me. And um, obviously, uh, yeah, if you go through our website and uh, we have a live chat feature, Dr. Faisal Mensah and Dr. Adams are also there um, to help uh, with anything that you guys need. So wherever we can help, um, please let us know. Thank you very much. Thank you.